Yeah, we have some lines here. Shall we try here, Sandra? Yeah. If we don't take care of the planet or the ocean, we are going to have problems. There's another line here. Nice. This is our first line? This is our first line. Okay. I think that the seaweed farming is beyond the products that we can generate, like food, biofuels, bioplastic, pharmaceutical products. There we go. All right, where's the thing? Oh my God, this one is really big. Oi, oi, oi. My babies. There is a fast-growing industries which are using seaweed for packaging, for example, so to avoid plastic. Seaweed is also a really good ingredient for cosmetics. Yay! <laughs> My opinion is like the climate change is happening. Cultivating seaweed, it contributes to reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. At least I'm contributing or doing something and it's part of the solution. Okay, put it back. Yeah, that's all. We have enough for us, right? Yes. Okay, guys, uh, we move. Right, next one. That is another reason I love being a seaweed farmer. I believe that sustainable industry is possible. When I was eight, I remember that I asked my parents for a microscope for Christmas. I remember that I was already curious for, for science by when I was at uh, that age. My parents actually did it. They got me a microscope. I was the, the happiest uh, girl in the world, actually. And now look at me. Now here I am, working in a lab, professionally. So seaweed has always been something that I was interested in. I remember that in the university, I was the typical nerd together with my friends. When I finished the, uh, the high school, I remember very well that my father told me to check uh, all the options because he knew about my passion uh, for the ocean and also about science. He suggested to go to, to Cadiz to do marine science. And I thought, oh, that would, be a, that would be a good option. But I asked him like, but Papa, it's gonna cost a lot. And he said like, yeah, no worries, Anna. Your mom and I, we will support you mentally and uh, financially. So that's why I chose marine science and I went to Cadiz. I'm really glad that my parents pushed me to go to Cadiz because I am who I am thanks to them. When I finished the, the bachelor degree, during that time, I remember that I started the relationship with Cesar. We met at a really huge party in Spain, yeah. He was, <laughs> he was quite, how do you call it, like, quite smart. Sometimes he was dropping these uh, Latin names. He knew what kind of uh, things to use uh, to catch my attention. Yes, bit. Perfect. Gracias. That's how I met him. Ay, 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 esta la consistencia. Ay, ay, ay. So Cesar and I, we're from Spain. ¿Cómo vas tú? Yo bien, yo en el momento en el que tú tengas el, el ajo se lo he vale. hecho. We do plenty of dishes. Croquetas, tortillas de patatas, albóndigas. Everything is delicious. We end up with a lot of olive oil. Marina, ¿qué? ¿Qué está papá en la cocina? Ve con el papá. Because the olive oil can contaminate uh, a lot of liters of uh, water, we could not dispose it in the, in the sink. <laughs> I mentioned to Cesar that we need to find a solution for, for this olive oil. I told him that we could make soap out of it. He found the idea kind of crazy at the beginning because he didn't know how to do it. He was asking me, but Anna, do you think that if we made soap from the croquetas, it will smell croquetas? And I was like, no, <laughs> it will not smell at all. It's a process where the molecular form of olive oil is changed. It makes it uh, safe to dispose and to use it as a detergent. And then I use that detergent for washing clothes. I've been recycled liters of liters of olive oil. It's a win win. That was also part of my journey as an environmentalist.
I moved to, to Norway, in Trondheim specifically, because I got a post-op position. So I was so focused on being a professor. And at the same time, I was super stressed. I thought that uh, if you have a PhD, the only place that you can develop your career is in the university. I was working all the time, working on proposals, meetings, papers, and I barely saw Cesar and Marina. So that was really, really hard for me. Cesar knows that's uh, how special is my birthday for me. He prepared a dinner with uh, our friends. They were waiting for me, but I didn't show up. I was just in a meeting while my family was waiting for me and my friends as well. I saw Cesar and Marina sitting in, uh, in the couch with all the food there, and um, I saw Cesar's face. It was kind of um, devastated. Um, so yeah, I, I think about it and I want to cry. I felt terrible. I really felt really bad. I think that I lost direction. When that happened, I really thought that maybe what I was doing was not worth it. I'm losing time with my family. Look, look how big they are. Oh, wow. They're bigger, huh? And this part is thicker, and this one is uh, thinner. because uh, it's developing. So, so. yeah, exactly. Okay. So during that time, I started in Seaweed Solutions because they needed a person to do all the environmental part. I realized that uh, there were more options to work outside of the academia. So applying my knowledge, expertise, and in a sustainable industry. We work the whole seaweed value chain, so from the hatchery to the finished products. We also provide seaweed lines to different customers, which we have uh, along the Norwegian coast. And I'm the environmental research coordinator. I'm responsible for studying how to optimize the growth based on all the environmental characteristics at sea. And of course, like we define and refine new protocols at the hatchery phase to improve the production. It's not the typical science as you do in the academia. I would say that it's even better because it's something that you apply and it's something that you could see how it's developed further. Can we bring it? Oh my God. <laughs> ah. <laughs> when I started to work in Seaweed Solutions and I was in the boat and uh, collecting the samples, it was something that I really enjoy. It was kind of like a combination of all my nerd that I got when I was in the university about the uh, algae. And now it, it was kind of like came true somehow, like and applying everything that I learned. Daniel! <laughs> the best part is that I have time for my family now. Uh, Daniel is the youngest. Marina is four years old. Muy bien, Marina. She is kind of like a mini-me. Buah! Que vea. Mira, no toque nada. Tú mira solo. ¿Lo ves? My concerns about climate change for our kids, for the next generation, is going to be a problem. Cesar and I have the same visions. We feel like it's super important to teach our kids that the environment and the consequences of our behavior. I know that we are not going to solve all the problems that we have in the planet, but I like to think that we are part of something which is benefit for the environment and also for us. Any tiny contribution counts. That is also another reason I love being a seaweed farmer. For sure it's not going to solve the entire problem that we have, but I like to think that we are part of the solution.